This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're now going to go through and look at another aspect of group accounts, which is looking at your changes in group structure, which is a pretty challenging area of the syllabus, I think. So what do we mean by looking at changes in group structure? Well, essentially, it's about acquiring or disposing of shares within an entity. Uh, but doing it in stages. So what do we mean by that? So with our change in group structure, there are two changes that we look for, uh, step acquisitions and step disposals. So if we think about a step acquisition first, that's whereby we acquire shares in stages uh, of a business. So maybe we, we don't have enough cash to, to fully go and gain control of an entity in one go. Maybe we need to buy the shares step by step. So one year we buy, say, 30%, and then the next year we buy another 40%, which now gives us 70% and control. So it's about looking at how we account for when we got bought the 30% initially, and then when we bought the additional 40%. Uh, similarly, step disposal is going the other way, isn't it? Uh, maybe we have control and we start to sell some of our shares. And as we sell shares, maybe we lose control of the entity. So the key bit that we need to understand is when we buy shares or whether we sell shares, where does that get to with regards to our percentage ownerships? I think the best way to look at it is like a, a timeline, okay? Uh, whereby if you own 20%, then that's just a bog standard investment. And for now, we will just treat that investment at cost, won't we? Uh, if you have, say, between 20 and 50%, from our earlier studies, you know that that gives us significant influence, uh, so the power to participate. And we use equity accounting, don't we? Uh, anything greater than 50% gives us control, doesn't it? And if we have control, then that gives us the ability then to direct the activities and therefore consolidate. OK, everybody happy with that? There are three separate stages. Uh, of investment. Investment, significant influence, control, cost, equity accounting, consolidate. What we're going to look at first of all is a step acquisition and that's whereby as we've said we acquire shares in stages so we're going if you like up the set of stirs. Imagine you've got 100 stirs. Each stir represents one percentage ownership step. Uh, so if we're on the first 20 steps we have an investment. If we buy more shares and get to the 20 to the 50th step, we have significant influence and associates and we equity account. If we get to anywhere greater than the 50th step, we therefore then have control and we consolidate, don't we? Uh, so that's going up the stairs. As we come down the stairs, that's the second bit we look at in the videos and that's step disposals. So we originally had control, didn't we? Uh, but as we then dispose of shares, we start to move down the stairs. As we go past that 50th step, yeah, we no longer consolidate, do we? And therefore, we have to equity account. And as we go further and further down those stairs, as we get to the first 20 steps, uh, then we now only have an investment. And the key bit that we're going to have to consider, whether we go up the stairs or down the stairs, via a step acquisition or a step disposal, is that 50th step because that's where things change isn't it uh, some literature refers to it as the accounting boundary or you can think about it as a door okay as you go through the door whether you're going up the stairs or down the stairs that changes the accounting treatment because if you go up the stairs and you go through that door and cross the accounting boundary you now consolidate so you have to add in all the assets all the liabilities all the income all the expense of that now subsidiary you have to calculate goodwill. You have to calculate non-controlling interest. There's a lot that goes on as we go through this door going up the stairs. Similarly, if we come down the stairs and we go through the door, we now no longer consolidate as we pass that accounting boundary. We do not have control. So therefore, we now no longer consolidate. We need to remove the assets and liabilities. Uh, we need to remove the goodwill. We need to remove the non-controlling interest. So again, there is a lot that happens when we go through that accounting boundary, which is sat there on that 50th step out of the 100. So what I suggest you do is look at the step acquisitions first. 
look at going up the stairs and look at the different scenarios that we can have. Once you're happy with that, then start to think about how it works with regard to the step disposals. Just remember, as I said, I think it's one of the more technically difficult areas of group accounting within the syllabus. So do spend a little bit of time working it through and making sure that you understand it. So we're going to go through and look at what happens in a step acquisition when an investment becomes a subsidiary. So the key bit there is that you have an investment, so anything less than 20%. You climb up the stairs and you get to the door on the 50th step. You get to that accounting boundary, don't we? And it's at that point the accounting treatment really changes because we begin to consolidate. So what you've got there, two things essentially. Uh, first of all, your old investment that you had, uh, so whatever was the less than 20%, you need to measure it at its fair value. Okay, uh, So it might have been held at cost. It may have been revalued to fair value, maybe at the previous reporting date, but you need to get it up to its most recent value. So you revalue it to fair value, and then any gain that you have uh, is shown in profit or loss. Okay. Uh, but as you've gone through and if you like crashed through the door on the 50th step and stumbled across the accounting boundary, then you begin to consolidate and therefore you need to calculate your goodwill, don't you? And th there's just a, a little bit extra that you need to go through and consider because you look at what you have paid, but what you have paid for that extra investment is just getting you from the step that you have previously stood at to your step through the accounting boundary okay so let's just say we went from say a 15 percent holding up to a 65 percent holding then we have paid haven't we for an additional 50 percent so the cost of the additional investment is 50 percent uh, the non-controlling interest that we add in will be 35 percent and we compare that, don't we, to 100% of the net assets. Uh, issue that you've got, however, is that you've only valued, is it 85% of the subsidiary? So what we need to do there is we need to put in the fair value of your existing interest. So we previously held 15%. We've just revalued that up to fair value and any gain has gone through profit or loss. And we add that into our goodwill calculation. So this figure here is the new bit that you go through and consider. There's nothing else other than that. OK, uh, so you add in the fair value to your normal goodwill calculation of the existing interest. Simple. So let's go through there and have a look. Is it at the example, Jeremy? It says calculate the goodwill to appear in the Jeremy Group Statement of Financial Position at the 31st of December 20x5. Uh, so what you've got there is it says Jeremy acquired 40% of the equity interest of David for $40 million several years ago. Uh, on the 1st of January x5, Jeremy acquired an additional 35% uh, for £45 million. Pounds. And the net assets fair value were 105 million. Uh, we're told the fair value of the non-controlling interest was 32, and the fair value of the original 40% was there at 52 million. So it says it's an investment to a subsidiary. So for whatever reason, that 40% holding that we had did not give us significant influence, did it? So what we can go through and do is we can go through there, can't we, and pull together the goodwill calculation. So we need to take the fair value of the consideration. So how much have we paid? Uh, well, we bought our additional 35% for, is it 45 million? So that's my additional, was it 35%? Uh, what's also happened is we originally had a 40% holding and that 40% holding is now worth 52 million. So the 52 million is the fair value of your existing holding. 
So is that there? As your 40%. So that's is it 40 and 35, 75%. You then have is it the 25%, which is the non controlling interest at the date of acquisition. And we're told the fair value of the non controlling interest was 32 million. So I put in my 32 million there. And then I deduct the net asset to acquisition, which, if memory serves me right, were there, weren't they? At 105 million. If you total that up, you should get, I think, is it 24 million? Okay. 97, no. Yeah, 24. Okay, so that there is your goodwill. Your goodwill. We say at acquisition, but it's the date that we cross the accounting boundary, isn't it? The date uh, that we gain greater than 50% because we had 35, we bought 40. Oh, sorry, we had 40 and we bought 35. So that took us to 75%, didn't it? Okay, so we went through the accounting boundary. The only other thing that I would note, it wasn't asked for in the question, but we'll note it anyway, is that we originally had, was it 40 million for the 40%? Uh, it's now worth 52 million, so there is a gain, isn't there, as well of 12 million that goes through profit or loss. That's it, okay. Exam questions uh, will ask you to calculate the goodwill when you've gone from an investment up to a subsidiary. Thank you.